prepare to be astounded and amazed. So these are the introductory incantations that an illusionist, a prestidigitator, or a magician, if you would, might present to prepare his audience to witness wonder, gaze upon sights unseen, delve into dark secrets and mysteries, and experience revelations of ominous power. And since 2700 BC, in Egypt, these stage performers have stunned audiences with nothing more than garden variety public relations. I am very sorry, but there are no real magic words or magic deeds. It's simply a process that engages susceptible human psychology. And the best showman of all, P.T. Barnum, reminded us that there is indeed a sucker born every day. But once you move beyond the introductory pattern, a stage illusionist will lead you through three essential stages for a perfect magic trick, beginning with what magicians call the pledge, where he produces something from thin air. Magic. Hocus Pocus, Dominocus, a la peanut butter sandwiches. You are at once amazed, and a curiosity creates an insatiable appetite for more. Having drawn the audience in, the practice magician will proceed to the turn, where with magical words of misdirection and gestures of sleight of hand, trap doors, smoke and mirrors, and other mechanical devices, he will transform something very ordinary into something extraordinary. Like making a commonplace object, or even an elephant, disappear. An illusion mastered by the Chinese as far back as 206 BC. The Chinese who had been honing the arts since 1600 BC. But any magician well prepared can produce what appears like something from nothing. And there are perhaps a million easy to do perform tricks that an impressionable child could purchase in a magic shop. Why back in the dark ages, magic was only an entertainment for highly impressionable children, easily fooled. And any well-prepared magician can take that object and make it vanish into thin air. Which is perhaps the reason that around the Middle Ages, Magical art became associated with the occult, witchcraft, and dark arts. But only the greatest magician fully prepared can take that extraordinary object that rose from nowhere and that suddenly vanished without a trace as if it were all a mystical dream and then attempting the truly extraordinary, make it materialize again. Something like a novel coronavirus that suddenly materialized from nowhere in central China. Extraordinarily developed into a pandemic pathogen threatening the world. And that now, according to the official report from state-controlled media in Beijing, has almost entirely disappeared in China. And now, moving into an unprecedented presidential election, many are scrambling to replicate the success of the Chinese like Joe Biden who is absolutely convinced that he can make it all disappear, just like the Chinese did. If only a national mandate required everyone to wear a mask for three months since closing businesses, outlawing social gatherings, and ordering everyone to stay at home did not work like it did for the Chinese science. But only a child believes that he can perform magic by simply repeating magic words of the magician that he saw on stage, or attempting to mimic the gestures of the magician that he watched with his very eyes upon the stage. The hand, as they say, is quicker than the eye. So now, using the science, let's attempt to examine exactly how this magical trick may have been performed. On December 31st, the Chinese reported to the world their discovery of a pneumonia of unknown etiology that appeared to have emerged in the Kunan seafood wholesale market. 
a wet market the size of nine American football fields, primarily an indoor venue, but at which only a total of 27 persons were infected. Extraordinary. By January 14th, the Chinese had only a total of 41 laboratory confirmed cases from which they were able to conclude that there appeared to be evidence to support a medical determination that the disease was being transmitted from person to person, but only amongst families residing in close quarters for extended periods of time. On February 24th, after a two-week extensive study of over 55,000 cases, the World Health Organization still could not definitively conclude that a novel coronavirus was being transmitted by droplets from person to person, breathe, during, talking, sneezing, and coughing. Because tracer contacts found less than 5% of secondary infections. And because once again, once again, infections spread appeared to be driven by families living in close connection for extended periods, primarily fathers in the 42nd largest city in the world and exacerbated by the draconian lockdown orders. Around the same time, the Centers for Disease Control examined a cluster of outbreaks that occurred aboard luxury cruise ships like the Princess Diamond, which set sail from the port of Yokohama, Japan, and where a, despite a quarantine immediately implemented, infections continued to rise for an extended period, finding the highest incidence of infection, ironically, among American passengers. And while observing simply these facts in isolation, it may be rather simple to conclude that the infected persons naturally infected one another in close connection with one another for extended periods of time. There still arises just one problem. How on earth did the pathogen arrive there in the first place? Someone had to bring it to the farmhouses in China, and someone had to bring it to the cabins of the passengers aboard cruise ships. And why, only after extended interactions, did this extraordinary pathogen only produce effects upon them? Think of it this way. If a fire were to break out in a farmhouse or in a cruise ship cabin, the natural inclination is not to conclude that the occupants burned one another because the fire, like in a stage illusion, captures our eyes and our imaginations, leading us to what appears to be a plausible and likely conclusion. But if a disease were to break out, our natural inclination is to conclude that an infected person would have to have caused the other persons to be infected. And scientists call that person the index case, as is found in the Skagit County choir rehearsal that many state governors like Ralph Northam have used in courts to close churches before Easter. But for a moment, imagine yourself as a magician producing the grandest illusion in the world. Isn't that exactly what you would want your audience to think? My name is Major Mike Will. And I am running for U.S. Congress with liberty, honor, and excellence. By God, we shall make America great again. Honest. Hit a big scene. This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling.
And y'all go back now. Yeah.